This is Robert Picardo, and you're watching The Planetary Post. Welcome to The Planetary Post for June. If you've got a taste for space, here's what's cooking. First off, biggest news coming up, the Juno mission will finally reach Jupiter. And it happens on July 4th. How cool is that? So follow the Planetary Society's own Emily Lakdawalla and our social media channels so that you'll be up to date on this historic mission. Next up on the menu, June 30th is Asteroid Day, a day to raise awareness about the asteroid threat. After all, we don't want to go the way of the ancient dinosaurs. For more information, go to planetary.org slash defense. Recently, I went on a special visit to the Goddard Space Flight Center to visit the James Webb Space Telescope currently being built. I took along my good friend and CEO of the Planetary Society, Bill Nye. We had a great time. Have a look. We're walking in now to see the James Webb Telescope. Famous building 29. 29, Bill. All right, I'm here at Goddard Space Center with Bill Nye and Amber Strawn. Amber is an astrophysicist and she's gonna tell us what this thing is. Yeah, so this is our hyperwall here at NASA. Hyperwall. Hyperwall. And um, what you're seeing here is a gorgeous image from the Hubble Space Telescope. But what's really cool about being here today is we're going to see the next generation in space telescope. That's right. The James Webb. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be about 100 times better than the Hubble Space Telescope. Let's go see the James Webb. It's huge. It's huge. So we're here in the engineering and test facilities here at Goddard. I love what you've done with it. Behind us here is Goddard's largest cryovacuum chamber. And so what we do in here is we suck all the air out, essentially, and make an environment that is space-like. So we're getting down to tens of Kelvin inside this, this chamber. Ten so degrees above ten absolute degrees zero. above absolute zero, where all every movement stops. So this is a model of the telescope, a tiny little model. The real thing's about four stories high. But the way this telescope works is that light comes in from the distant universe, sort of collects on this big mirror here, focuses on the secondary, and then comes back through the middle here, and the instruments are on the back side. And because it's an infrared telescope, it has to be kept incredibly cold. That's right, and that's why we're launching it to deep space, a million miles out, about four times further away than the moon. So this is a, a test element of the mirrors. And this is coated in gold. Yeah, so the whole mirror, about six and a half meters wide, is coated in a really thin microscopic layer of gold. Mm -hmm. So it's about the size of a golf ball. It's about the amount of gold. That's how much gold is on it. You get to take the leftover gold home, or is it the kind of thing? <laughs> they frown on that. They frown like on to. it, but it happens. It happens. Yeah. Yeah. The gold is the perfect stuff, or the best stuff for infrared. Right. And it reflects visible light, too. Yes, reflecting visible light and really good reflector of infrared light. Of heat. <laughs> Man, that's a real deal. <laughs> it's a real deal, for sure. So we've just finished the mirror in the last several months. So the mirror is inside the scaffolding here, facing okay. down. All right. So now the big thing that they're doing today is putting the instruments on the mirror. So this is a huge milestone for the telescope. Now, I've been told that we will be able to see the first light of the universe with this telescope. What does that mean? So with Hubble, we've been able to push back and see pretty distant into the universe, but we can't see the very first galaxies that were born after the Big Bang. What this telescope is going to allow us to do is to push past that veil and see that first epoch of galaxy formation, all the way back to the first luminous objects that were born. And we will see exoplanets. This telescope is going to be, I think, our really our next big leap forward in understanding exoplanets. We'll be able to learn about their their atmospheres through spectra. Just a second. Yeah. Your claim, if I understand, <laughs> is that we're gonna see through the, light's gonna pass through the atmosphere of this tiny image, yeah. way, way, way out there. That's right. And we're gonna look at the spectra of the gases in that atmosphere. Yeah. That is, that is pretty cool. And it starts right here. Not bad. I just want to thank our astrophysicist guide, Amber Strawn, uh, for taking all the time and giving us the incredible explanation of this amazing technological achievement. You're most welcome. Thanks for visiting today. Thank you. At astronomer. Get it? Huh? <laughs> astronomer? Huh? Huh? What a great day. 
We are all looking forward to the completion and eventual launch of the James Webb Space Telescope and the amazing images of the cosmos that it will bring us. Finally, for dessert, the chef recommends Picardo's Pick. This awesome image is from LightSail's Day in the Life test on May 23rd. It's more of a selfie than a selfie. Sorry. On next month's episode of The Post, we'll have video of me in the CubeSat clean room at Cal Poly to see the actual spacecraft Light Sail 2. So remember, come back next month for your next treat out of the cosmic oven. Anyone for Pluto pizza? Yeah, I know it's not a planet anymore. It's a pizza. They gave me a James Webb Space Telescope refrigerator magnet. It has the shape of the mirrors and everything. I know, it's so cool. They gave me one too. And they gave me a sticker and another sticker and a bookmark and a pencil and a pen and a pin and a keychain. <laughs> you got a keychain? <laughs>